Now, one of the things I've learned is, is that every single one of you here and every single one of your businesses is way more change ready than you think they are. You can do way more than you think you can. Because if I'd said to you back in February 2020, we're going to make everyone in Aruba virtual and work at home that can be virtual. All of you would have said, whoa, no way, no way. It's going to take a year to plan that out. We have to do a little plan. We have to socialize it with people. We have to trial it out. There's occupational health and safety regulations. There's HR laws. There's legislation. There's regulations. There's privacy issues. There's technology issues. There's VPN issues. How, there, how are we going to get people to work at home on their kitchen tables? We can't do it. It's going to take a long time. And then once we have the plan, what we're going to do is we are going to have to implement the plan, and that's going to take another year. We have to do a rolling wave rollout. We have to pilot it. We have to see if it works. Then we have to get feedback and evaluation, and then maybe by year three, we'll have it down. And yet I know, not only did you do that here in Aruba on Friday, March 13th, we did it in Canada, we did it in the US, we did it in the UK, we did it in the Netherlands, we did it all around the world. Everyone went like this into virtual mode. So we are way more change ready than we think and we break through our own self-imposed limitations that we have. The good thing about COVID, if there is one good thing, is that crises that we've been through like this are where people find their greatness. Crises pull out our greatness. Why is that? Because it pushes us in ways that we haven't been pushed. Every single one of you and every single person on the planet that's gone through the last three years, you have a whole new set of change muscles. You have a whole new set of skills and abilities that you did not have before. Because if you can go through three years in the pandemic, what can't you do? Ramp up that future readiness by consciously engaging your brain. Future focus that language. Expand your thinking and leverage the alchemy and power of language. Because it's that power of language that you use that will either engage people in your ideas or push people away from your ideas. And last but not least, remember to take calculated risks for inspired action. And be like Jim Dunn. Show up for people in those 2% moments. I call them those 2% moments. They don't happen a lot, but they're those moments that matter in your relationships with others. Calculated risks are tied in with innovation and innovation thinking. If you don't take risks, you don't get innovation. If you don't allow disruptive ideas to collide, you don't get innovation. There was a study done by a woman named Virginia Satir. She was a family therapist back in the 80s. And she did what she called her silly study. And if you don't believe me, it's on page 227 of her book that was written in 1988, which I can't remember the name of it. But it's on page 227, you can Google that. She did a silly study and she found that there were over 250 different ways to load the dishwasher and do dishes. 250 different ways. Now some of you are like, well that doesn't apply to me at work. How does that apply to me at work? Every single person thought their way was the right way. Think about that. 250 different ways to load the dishwasher, do dishes. Every person thought their way was the right way. Let's take this to work. Maybe there's another way we can do that business process. Maybe there's another way we can serve our customers. If there's 257 different ways to load the dishwasher and do dishes, maybe my way isn't the right way. Maybe there's other ways. Maybe there's other options out there to do that. Because when we start to look for what's good in disruptive ideas, when we let go, as one of you said, about the way things need to be done, and if you don't think you have control issues, next time someone loads the dishwasher the way you don't want to, try not to move it. It's hard. And it's the same at work. When you've been at work a long period of time and you know something has to be done this way, it's hard to let go of that. But if we want to move forward in the future work, we have to do that. And as a leader, 
Never underestimate the power that you have with the people that are in your orbit, whether it's clients, customers, colleagues, people you work with, people above you, people below you, people around you. Never underestimate that power that you have in your one-to-one -one interactions. And yet, how do we, how do we bring our kindest and our strongest and our bravest foot forward when there's so much going on? Well, I know that you can because every single one of you is way more change ready than you think you are. Thank you.